eye of Pluto this morning. And our John Gonzalez has more on the newly captured images of the dwarf planet. Well, the patriotic celebration is still going on this afternoon here in Laurel, Maryland. What a historic day. Nine and a half years, three billion miles later, NASA has reached the icy dwarf planet of Pluto. Well, 7,000 miles from it. That's the closest ever. And scientists used the New Horizons spacecraft. This is the fastest space probe ever launched. This, of course, is a much smaller scale model. The real one, picture a grand piano or a smart car, if you will, and it is surrounded by sensors and cameras. That's how we're getting the images. And this over here, well, now considered to be the most detailed image of the planet Pluto. And right off the bat, you can see it almost looks like a heart shape right there at the bottom. Scientists now believe it's younger than imagined and about 50 miles larger. And inside the auditorium here at the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab, well, it erupted with cheers and chants of USA. Among those in the crowd, the children of astronomer Clyde Tombaugh he is the farmer turned scientist who discovered the planet in 1930. It means that we have finally gotten there. My dad's ashes are on board. Uh, and it's just, it's a fantastic thing for our family to actually get to see Pluto close up rather than just being a little piece of light. It will take about a year and a half to collect all the images and data, and this happening 50 years to the day NASA first explored Mars. In Laurel, Maryland, John Gonzalez, ABC 7 News. I was just telling Doug, I want to go to Mars. I want to, okay. I want to go to Mars. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> see you in about eight or nine years. Have okay. a good time. <laughs> well, no, that, somebody's going. Some lucky men and women are going to go. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be exciting. So, uh, Very cool. Here, our excitement it all revolves around what's going to happen weather-wise this afternoon. Will right. we get the heavy thunderstorm? Will the flash flooding come to pass? We're afraid that it might. So okay. let's get started. Tell you what you need to know on this Tuesday midday. We'll start with a time lapse, uh, courtesy of our Weatherbug camera on the campus of John Champ High School in Aldi. And it was cloudy start today. Look on the bottom left. You see the house there working. Uh, they're building a new house. All the Tyvek uh, moisture barrier goes up today. They're making good progress here. So maybe they'll get more in before the rains return later in the day. And the rain will return. It's only a question of time. In anticipation of the potential of more heavy rain and downpours, the National Weather Service has uh, issued actually a couple weather service offices uh, our one locally the one in Blacksburg Virginia and other ones uh, farther to the west have issued a pretty large area that is under a flash flood watch for later and the reason is torrential downpours are possible in these areas and the ground is already saturated so it won't take much to aggravate the situation and cause some flash flooding that's a concern but at the moment nothing much out there rain wise we're going to keep our eyes on Doppler radar all day 83 now at Reagan National 82 degrees in Fredericksburg 81 in Gaithersburg and in Frederick a muggy afternoon and I think as we we get through the early afternoon hours in the metro area. In many areas will see more in the way of sunshine. That'll boost the temperature and help to destabilize the atmosphere a bit. Notice it looks pretty good off to the uh, west, but that's where the leading edge of the cold front is. So when the cold front gets into town this evening, everything's going to work together to increase the probability of showers and storms. And any one of those storms could produce damaging winds and possibly some hail and some torrential rain. Our uh, future cast model, at least this model, indicates the uh, line itself may move through about 10 o'clock tonight. And then as the uh, line shifts off to the east and the front goes through, still some upper level energy could come in the afternoon hours tomorrow. Give us a partly cloudy day with a few scattered showers and then drier, cooler air moves in by tomorrow night around for Thursday and a good part of Friday. And then by the weekend, we're right back into the haze, heat and humidity and daily thunderstorm chances. This graphic shows the uh, chances of damaging winds and hail and thunderstorms. Slight risk in the yellow area and enhanced risk. This is probably where most of the really nasty stuff will be and lighter chances, uh, smaller chances for that kind of stuff as you go farther north. Northeast, pretty much cuts uh, right between the D.C. and Baltimore metro areas. So we'll be watching all of these regions this afternoon for any potential of storms to develop, any show that any signatures that they might produce any sort of severe weather. So here are the next seven days for you. Today we'll put the probability at 60% of showers and storms, and that chance will last two and possibly past midnight. Tomorrow, partly cloudy temperatures. Once again, we'll be in the upper 80s. We'll have a 30% chance of showers. Mid-80s on Thursday and Friday with sunshine and lower humidity. Saturday, Sunday, and Monday speak for itself but uh, I'll speak for them. It'll be partly cloudy, <laughs> hot, and humid. In the